Good day, learners. I am Miss Tin, your Guru Kamigo. Welcome to another fun and exciting learning with me. Today, we are going to talk about interactions in histories and intertidal zone. At the end of this video, you will be able to discuss the interactions among living things and non-living things in estuaries and intertidal zones. Life on Earth is a product of different interactions in a region or geographic area where both biotic factors such as plants, animals, and other organisms and abiotic factor like weather and landscape work together. This area is called ecosystem. Estuaries, like any other ecosystem, consist of biotic and abiotic factors. The biotic and abiotic components of estuarine ecosystems interact in such a unique way that makes some organisms choose to reproduce in these areas. For such reason, estuaries are also called as nurseries of the seas. An estuary is a place where the fresh water from the river mixes with the salt water from the sea. Biotic factors are the living components in an ecosystem. These include all the plants, animals, and microorganisms found in estuaries such as mangrove trees, migratory birds, and small fishes. Abiotic factors are non-living factors in the environment. The abiotic factors that greatly affect organisms in estuaries include waves, salinity, temperature, amount of sunlight, and type of soil. Waves refer to the movement of the surface of the water. These are strong forces that organisms must learn to live with. Kelp, a kind of algae, has strong root-like structures that attach itself to rocks to keep it from being carried away by the waves. Salinity refers to the amount of salt in water. The combination of sea water and fresh water in estuaries is called brackish water. Mangroves and blue crabs have adjusted well to the constantly changing salinity of water due to the nonstop flow of fresh water and salt water through the estuary. Temperature refers to the level of hotness or coldness of the water. Temperature differs because of the tides and amount of sunlight. Some organisms use plants like mangroves to keep themselves concealed from direct sunlight or away from the coldness of the water. Since estuaries are shallow as compared to the seas, they are also conducive for photosynthesis to take place. Algae, seaweeds, seagrasses, and other marine plants depend on the amount of sunlight that they receive in the estuaries. The type of soil varies in the estuaries, depending on the strength of waves and kinds of rock present in the area. Some areas are full of rocks, sand, pebble, or clay. The topsoil layer found in an estuary is composed mostly of peat or salt crust. Salt can be found within the soil, which can be acidic, posing problems to the survival of plant life. Organisms require energy to perform life activities. In this case, they need to eat food. Now let us analyze the figure. Observe the pattern how organisms interact and get energy. This is an estuary food web. A food web is an interlocked pattern of food chains that consist of producers and consumers. The sun provides energy to primary producers such as plankton. 
then the plankton are eaten by consumers. There are four types of consumers, herbivores like mollusks, carnivores like herons, omnivores like salmon, and detrivores. The heron eats salmon and small fish. Their diet is not picky, and they eat basically anything that they can swallow. Salmon eat different foods at different stages of their life cycle. They eat like freshwater mollusk, shrimp, stonefly larva, and fish. Shrimp may be eaten by salmon. Freshwater mollusk may be eaten by small fish and salmon. Intertidal zones are areas which are constantly exposed to the changing tides. They provide homes to many kinds of plants and animals. The daily changes in the tides play a major role to the life of living things in this area. The intertidal zone which is also known as the foreshore or seashore is the area that is above water level at low tide and underwater at high tide. Biotic factors in an ecosystem such as intertidal zone and estuary are composed of all plants, animals, and microorganisms living in it. These organisms live in different habitats found in intertidal zones and estuaries. This includes coral reefs, salt marshes, mud flats, rocky shores, and mangrove forests. Coral reefs provide shelter to thousands of fish. The corals themselves are animals that feed on plankton. These corals form reefs that protect the coast from strong waves and currents. Salt marshes are areas that are filled with seawater during high tides and drain during low tides. Organisms found in salt marshes are clams, mussels, oysters, crabs, snails, and shrimps. Plants found in salt marshes are sea grasses and other plants that are tolerant of salt water. Mud flats or tidal flats are areas where mud from the seas or rivers is deposited. They are usually the areas for migratory birds, crabs, sand dollars, mussels, clams, mollusks, shellfish, and some fish. Algae and sea lettuce provide food for the herbivores in this area. Rocky shores are areas where solid rocks are found. Animals found in the rocky shores are plankton, brittle stars, sea stars, hermit crab, barnacles, limpids, mollusk, periwinkle, shore crabs, shrimp, and prawns. Mangrove forests are areas that are filled with mangrove trees. These trees have adapted to salt water. Mangrove forests are breeding grounds for different kinds of fish and shellfish. Like estuaries, abiotic factors such as waves, salinity, amount of sunlight, temperature, and type of soil affect the organisms in intertidal zones. Just like in estuaries, organisms in intertidal zones need energy to live through eating food. Now let us analyze the figure and observe the different organisms and imagine how they interact and get energy. Hermit crabs are omnivorous scavengers, eating seaweeds, algae, rockweed, mussels, and clams. Limpids are prey for sea anemone, starfish, shorebirds, fish, seals, and humans. Algae and other plants are eaten by plant-eating zooplankton. This plankton is eaten by larger carnivorous plankton. These are eaten by a mussel, barnacle, or other marine invertebrate. 
The mussel is then eaten by an ochre star, which may be eaten by a gull or a sea otter. Sea archons will eat just about anything that floats by. Its sharp teeth can scrape algae off rocks and grind up plankton, kelp, periwinkles, and sometimes even barnacles and mussels. Animals which prey on chitons include humans, seagulls, sea stars, crabs, lobsters, and fish. Now let's have fun and do this activity. Learning Task 1 and scramble the letters to form the word being described by the phrase. Amount of salt and water. Very good! The answer is salinity. Source of nutrients of living organisms like plants. Good job! The answer is soil. Place where the fresh water from the river mixes with the salt water from the sea. Excellent! The answer is estuary. It refers to the hotness or coldness of water. Nice! The answer is temperature. Areas which are constantly exposed to the changing tides. Good job! The answer is intertidal zones. The relationship between biotic and abiotic factors in a certain place. Excellent! The answer is ecosystem. For learning task 2, write true if the statement conveys correct information and false if not. Plants and animals need abiotic factors in order to survive. Very good! The answer is true. Biotic factors are the non-living factors in the environment. Great! The answer is false. Temperature in intertidal zone changes because of the tides and amount of sunlight. Nice! The answer is true. The different types of soils in an intertidal zone have an effect on the kind of living organisms that lives on it. Excellent! The answer is true. Intertidal zones are covered with water during low tide. Nice! The answer is false. Plankton may be eaten by small fish, crab, and mussel. Very good! The answer is true. Chitons and limpets may be eaten by hearing gull and seagull. Very good! The answer is true. Shrimp may be eaten by algae. Very good! The answer is false. 
Sea urchin eats periwinkle, limpets, and crab. Nice, the answer is true. Hermit crab eats seaweeds and algae. Good job, the answer is true. That ends our lesson for today. I hope you had a great time learning with me. Thank you for watching. See you next time.